This is Drom Shekasuto. והנחש היה ערום מכל חיית השדה. And the snake, he was wicked. He was, he was sneaky. And also it's written that he was naked. The meaning of the word naked means that he was naked from mitzvot, from good actions. He couldn't care less of doing good. He didn't want to do good. He was empty and he didn't want anything for himself. He was just a horrible, pure evil. Now, of course, the word pure does not fit evil, but we want to say that he was only evil. He had only one will to damage. That is the nature of the snake. He just wants to sabotage, to destroy. He sees someone happy, he wants to erase his smile. He sees someone healthy, he wants to crash his health. That's the nature of the snake. And he was the worst from all animals you can imagine. Mikol chayat asadeh, from all animals of the field. Asher asad anayelohim, that the Creator made. Ve'yomer elayisha, and he went to speak with the wife, with the woman. Now, I'm talking about that concept. And it's a very, very painful subject. Like, hey, where is her husband? What just took place here? Everything was perfect. The man and his wife just been created, being separated to two different bodies. They love each other. He sees in her the future of his life. She sees in him the same thing. Everything is perfect. They were both loving each other. We, we learned last time that every, uh, for that, every person will leave the house of his father and his mother and will glue himself to his wife and they will become one flesh again. And suddenly, Eve is walking alone in the garden and everything is like horrible and the snake is coming that evil snake so why why did it happen so there is a big secret that is um, that is hidden here and that's the secret and that's uh, the, 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 the reason for all temptations when a person is not connecting himself to the real work of fixing his attributes to become a better person, by that he is being exposed to all kinds of damages, to all kinds of darkness in his life. Now, when the man and his wife, they were there and they enjoyed each other, they were not enjoying each other in the right and holy intention of the Creator. They were not there only to satisfy each other, only to, to, to satisfy heaven and to make Hashem pleased and to, to do and to keep God's will. They fell very fast into that trap of, of lusts and desires. And after being together and having their uh, um, intimate time relationship with each other immediately a separation took place between them and she went alone in the garden and he went elsewhere and because that they were not pure in their mind on making each other happy so after they satisfy themselves by being together immediately they like fell into a lower level um, of being even more selfish and more self-centered. And then they're finding themselves separated, not only in their bodies, also in their minds. And for that, every person needs to realize how important it is to work on our attributes to care and to love <coughs> and, to, and to share and to be sensitive to, to our partners and to care about them and to think about them. The Bala Sulam, one of the most righteous people ever came down in, in, to this world, said that the only pleasure that a person allowed to feel when he is with, in relationship with his um, wife is the pleasure of 
satisfying here is the joy that you feel from giving comfort and happiness to someone else. In the moment that you become selfish, that you look for ways how to pleasure yourself, how to satisfy yourself, so the lust itself is separating you from your partner and then you're not together anymore. And the only pleasure that a person is allowed to feel while being with his soulmate is the satisfaction from her joy, from his joy, from the fact that you made her happy. From that you're allowed to feel happiness and joy and satisfaction. And the snake, that he was damned, that he was sneaky, that he was pure evil, he went to damage with his bad will, with his horrible intention. Immediately, like the snake, he has a divided tongue that is divided to two because he's always lying, because he's always making up excuses and creating ways of thinking and always bringing a second option and attempting. So the snake came. And he said to the woman, Vayomer Elaisha, Afke Amar Elohim lo tochlu mikol etzagan, even though that the Creator said that you're not allowed to eat from all trees of the garden, you're not eating from that one? Like, why? why? Even though that the Creator told us, that the Creator told you not to eat, like, the, the snake is trying to attempt her, we learned already that the Creator said, you are allowed to eat from all trees of the garden, except of that one, and except of that one, except of from tree of knowledge, and except of tree of life. So, now, the snake, he's playing innocent, immediately, he's pretending, why aren't you eating? Even though that Hashem, the Creator, told you, God told you, you're allowed to eat from all the fruits, you're not eating. Like, he's sitting and offering her immediately to go to that tree, the only tree that she cannot eat from. And the way that he's doing it is by pretending to be innocent, claiming to be pure. What's the problem? Hashem told you you're allowed to eat from all trees of the garden. Why aren't you eating from that? So the woman said to the snake, We are allowed to eat from the fruits of the trees of the garden. But from that unique tree that was inside the garden, God said, don't eat from it. And don't touch it. She added something. And that was another part of her failure. The beginning of the failure was the separation from her men. That was the beginning of the failure. And it's not her failure. It's their failure. This is why Adam been punished as well. And soon we will see that also he was separated in his mind, blaming her on the failure she she attempted me, she told me, whatever, he's blaming instead of taking responsibility on his failure. But you see a second step of her failure is that she is answering the snake and while answering she's adding things that never been told, that never been said. She's saying that Hashem, the Creator, told them not to touch that tree, pentemutun, for you not die because of it. But Hashem never said, don't touch that tree. Hashem said, don't eat from the tree. So the snake said to the woman, you're not going to die. And then he starts to lie. The real reason he's lying and saying, the real reason why God forbidden you to eat from that tree is because he knows that in the day that you'll eat from it, from that tree, your eyes will be open and you will become like God. You will know the difference between good and bad. Just a horrible lie with no connection to reality. 
Of course that every word here, that every verse here is very deep and very important and holds and contains a lot of knowledge, a lot of wisdom. But, you know, we're here only for 120 years, so we have to move on and continue. So the woman failed and she saw that that tree looks good for, for, for food, like it's tasty. And looks so beautiful, so gorgeous, like she had a lust, a desire for that fruit. And maybe she'll get wiser if she'll eat it. To make a long story short, she fell into the trap of the evil inclination of the Yetzirah. And this is why one of the main righteous people that we enjoying his light, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev, said that you cannot negotiate with the evil inclination. You don't even start a discussion with an evil person. You don't like start talking to him and while talking, explaining to No, no. If he's a thief, you don't talk to him. If he's a murderer, you don't negotiate with a murderer. Or you fight or you run away, like one of the two. You don't like try to help him understand and there's no conversation with such evil people. And the snake was evil. So she took from that fruit of the tree of knowledge and she failed and ate. And she gave the man for him to be with her and he ate as well. Both of their eyes been opened, and they realized that they were naked. So the fact that their eyes been opened, like we said about the light, they their eyes been opened to blindness. <laughs> they they've been opened to to see mistakes in life. Like suddenly everything is oh what I'm gonna do they like fell into anxiety into pressure into the world of imagination suddenly they had issues and problems with the way God created them oh we need to cover ourselves why are you so ashamed if you haven't sinned you don't need to be ashamed we will see that next time we'll learn that in the next part we will see that when the Creator is meeting them and calling them so, when they're hiding in the tree, maybe I'll read it for you. I don't want to stop you from, from learning. I'll teach you some more. Both their eyes been opened and and they realized that they are naked. And they covered themselves with uh, figs and uh, leaves and made belts out of it, like short pants, covered themselves. And they heard the voice of Hashem, of God, walking in the garden, in the spirit of the day. So Adam and Eve and his wife um, hide in the tree of the garden. Elohim El Adam. So Hashem, God created the Creator, called the man, Vayomer Lo Ayeka, and asked him, Where are you? So Adam answered to him, Vayomer, Et Kolcha Shamati Bagan Vaira. I heard your voice walking in the garden, and I was scared. Ke Roma Nochi Vaichabe, because I'm naked, that's why I was hiding. Vayomer, so God, the Creator, immediately understands everything, asks him, who told you that you're naked? Were you eating from the tree that I told you not to eat from? It's simple. Because that the person is sinning, that's why he's falling to fears and to pressure. Before you sin, you're a hero. You're a powerful person with no fears, with no worries. The real righteous people are those ones that are not afraid, not from war and not from their emotions and not from commitments and not from confronting their fears and not afraid even to die. They are brave and powerful and strong. Another verse is saying, Pachadu chataim b'tzion. But people in Zion started to be scared and afraid because of their sins. 
in the moment that the person is sinning, is violating the will of heaven, the real will of the Creator, fears are falling on him. Now, if you want to get rid of your fears, there is only one way. You need to do tshuva on your sins. You cannot get rid of your fears until you completed your tshuva. To do tshuva, it's to express your regret on the fact that you sinned in front of the Creator, to tell Him, look, I messed up, I did this and that, I'm sorry. You must explain the truth about your sin. You must stand and admit the truth. And then to ask for forgiveness, please Hashem help me not to do that horrible thing again. And to move on in life. That's the main process of tshuva. And if you hurt a person, you must apologize to him. And if you took something from someone, you must return that and not to have no debts. And you need to do as much as you can to fix. And may Hashem bless us all with purity and holiness and all good things. Amen. Can you hear that song? Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.